Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, periodicals, and yes, oh yes, even yoga. Audible has free apps so you can download and listen to your iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, Kindle Fire, plus the iPod and over 500 MP3 players. Unlike a streaming service or rental service, with Audible, you own your books. If you choose a book and you decide you don't like it, no worries. You can exchange it for another title anytime. No questions asked. So download a free book of your choice today at audiblepodcast.com slash yogamazing. Welcome everyone to this edition of the Yoga Amazing Video Podcast. I'm Chaz, I'm your host, and welcome back. Now this week I got an email from John and he's into bodybuilding, but he's also wanting to do yoga so that he can have strength and flexibility. Hence the episode Strength and Flexibility. So this is going to be an episode that's going to help overall conditioning for the body so that you are more open. Because I know if you're doing um, weights or bodybuilding, you're you know, you're, you get tight, your muscles get tight. So this will be a class that we will focus on opening the body more, but we'll also do a couple of poses that will help you to strengthen the body as well. So it's going to be a good class. It's going to be a fun class. And like John, if you have an idea for a a class or an episode, please send it to me, chaz at yogamazing.com. Remember, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you want a really good sweat workout, try the high yoga video series because it is a very intense workout. And when I say it's intense, it's high intensity interval yoga, high yoga. So please check that out when you get a chance. So remember, as we go through today's class, to breathe, relax, and have fun in this edition of the Yoga Amazing Video Podcast. In today's class, we're going to start in hero's pose. So I want you to drop back, sit on your heels, and let your bottom drop between your heels. Now remember, if this hurts, you can always place a blanket or a pillow here to help with that. But this is going to give you a great stretch here on the quads just to get the get the class going so i want you to roll the shoulder blades down your back close your eyes palms up i want you to deepen the breath start the ujjayi breathing that's where you inhale deeply through the nose hollow the throat expand the chest and lungs and then exhale back through the throat through the nose and just keep the breath consistent and fluid as we go through today's class just take a few moments here just to breathe and relax become present in the moment Now from here, slowly bring yourself to your hands and knees, and let's bring it uh, and do the position for the cat and the cow. So let's inhale, look up, shoulder blades down, and round tuck and squeeze. Inhale, looking up, spread the sits bones. Exhale, round tuck and squeeze. Very simple pose here to do. When you wake up in the morning, this is a pose that you do when you get out of bed. Really help you to open up the spine, give you a little bit more flexibility and movement for your body. and bring it back to the center. Stick your toes into the mat and we're gonna take it into a downward facing dog. So bend your knees, push back. Remember, we're going for an upside down V, not a soft end. So I don't want you here. A lot of times when people straighten their legs because they're they're tight, they come like this. So I want you to bend your knees, push your bottom back and up. Have the heels behind your feet. Spread your fingers, rooting the heels to the floor. And as I always say, If your heels don't touch the floor, your heels don't touch the floor, no big deal. Just let your body open up. Keep your neck long, draw the shoulder blades away from here and down the back.
Now from here, I want you to lunge the right leg forward. We're just gonna bring it into a nice lunge right here. Place your hands on your leg, and I want you to keep those toes dug into the back of the mat. Bring the arms up, shoulder blades down. There's gonna be two parts to this pose. So stay here deep in the breath. And slowly release. Now I want you to take that left arm back, grabbing that left leg and pulling that leg in. You're gonna feel the stretch on the quad. Pull your heel towards your bottom. Slowly release. Hands to the floor, you're gonna fly that right leg back, roll the hip, push it back, dog at a fire hydrant, and bring that right knee through for a pigeon. Lift into the heart and lay it out. And you're gonna feel this right there in your right cheek. And I want you all to stretch it out on the floor like this. I'm gonna stay here so that I can talk, or if it's too intense, you can come to your elbows as well. Either lay it out on the floor or stretch it or come to your elbows. Now, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to lean over and drop your butt down. Make sure that you square your body up so that you're getting the proper stretch. That's the most important. Technique is more important than trying to impress someone and doing it proper. you to bring it up and take it back to a down dog. Again, bend your knees, push it back, sink it in deep in the breath. And let's bring left leg forward, drop that knee, hands to the leg, get your balance. And once you have the balance, bring the arms up and root the hips in deep in the breath. And then release, reach back, grab the right foot, pull the right heel towards the bottom, your bottom, and you're gonna feel that again on your quad. So remember, if you feel the intensity, breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Release. From here, we're gonna fly the left leg back, roll the hip open, dog at fire hydrant, and left knee comes forward. Keep the toes dug into the mat and stretch it out. Remember, don't drop to your left butt cheek. Square the body up, stretch it out, or stay on your elbows, square the body up and breathe and sink into the pose because we carry a lot of tension and stress in our hips and in our neck and shoulders. So breathe and melt, breathe and melt. Slowly release, taking it back to a down dog. Okay, stay here and breathe. Remember, upside down V. From here, upper push-up position, plank. We're gonna work on some strength here. We're gonna stay here for a few breaths. Definitely, if you can hold this pose for a while, you're gonna really feel it in your core. A lot of people think that you need to do push-ups for your core, but something like this is just as intense. And from here, we're gonna stack it up and bring it into a stack leg, bring the arm up, lift the hips, Gaze up, deep in the breath. And 
release, plank, hold. And let's dock it on the other side. Shoulder over the wrist, look up, do a little slight bow, little crescent, side plank. Release, back to a plank, and push back to a down dog. Walk your feet to the center of your mat. I want you to bend your knees and bring it into Utkatasana. Turn Swati sideways, chair pose. So reach with your arms, try to sit. As I always say, try to sit, try to stand, you get stuck in the middle. Reach and root. And bring it up. From here, <clears throat> come to the center of your mat. We're going to open it up. We're going to turn the foot out. From here, we're going to do several poses, standing poses, that are going to work on opening the body, but it's also going to be energizing the body as well. So from here, let's bring it up. We're going to rotate into a warrior one. Remember, warrior one hips are straight forward. So arms up, and then I want you to bend that front leg, knee over ankle, tucking tailbone under, rooting into the back heel, lengthen with the fingertips, deepen the breath. Release, we're gonna rotate to keep the arms up. Let's take it all the way over to the other side. And again, bending that knee, knee over ankle, rooting in the back heel, the back foot, tucking the tailbone under, shoulder blades down, extending with the fingertips, gaze forward, soft eyes, deep in the breath. Release, bring it up, hands to your hips. From here, we're going to take the leg out, bring the arms up, and then we're gonna bend that front knee. Now I'm gonna give you two options here. One's they're easier and one's harder. So take the arm here, extended side angle, side ladder angle, bring it up to here. If you really wanna go deep, hand to the floor and reach. Looking up under your arm, towards the ceiling, Deep in the breath. Bring it up. Let's rotate to the other side. Same thing. Inhale. And as you exhale, bend, hand to the leg, extend with the arm or hand to the floor. But don't let your butt stick out. Don't let it go like that. Tuck your butt under. Gaze under the arm. Deep in the breath. to the hip and bring it back to the center. Stay in mountain, take a few breaths here before we move on. From here, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn sideways a little bit. We're gonna work on some strength. We're gonna do the crow pose. And from the crow pose, we're gonna hop it back to a down dog. So. We're gonna use that strength, we're gonna use the core, then we're gonna get that down dog in there to give us that stretch and flexibility. So remember when you're doing a crow, and you don't have to do the jump back if you don't want to, it's just an option. Now when you're doing a crow, remember, you need to build a shelf. A lot of times people get confused on this. So remember, you want to flatten your palms to the floor, then you wanna come have your, your on your toes. And right now all the weight is on the balls of my feet, the toes. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to squeeze the arms into the leg, legs into the arms. And I know there's some people who like doing it where 
the uh, it's more in the armpits whichever one works for you uh, this one just makes me work a little bit harder so i like it because i have to keep my legs active because i got to push my arms into my legs legs into my arms and i build my shelf that way so all we're going to do is do a transfer of of the weight and remember a lot of people get freaked out over this pose remember you're only a few inches off the floor if you fall well you're falling on your mat so just it's okay don't worry about it you'll you'll, you'll figure it out just it's just a it's all in technique so so if remember you're going to build yourself transfer the weight from your toes to your body and to your arms and bring it up one foot at a time stay here and breathe if you can just get set in Jump it back. Whew. Definitely feel that one. Great pose for upper body strength. Now, from here, release. I want you to lie down on the floor. We're going to do a bow pose. So now we're working on the flexibility. We're working on the spine. Getting that, get the, as I always say, the spine will keep you young. So let's get that flexibility back there. Now, for here, you're going to grab your feet, the tops of your feet. If not, you can use a belt or a towel as well to hold. So from here, you're going to inhale. And then as you exhale, kick your legs, feet back, lifting your thighs up off the floor, and then get a little rock. It's good for your digestion. Release. Push it back into child's pose and let's stretch out the back. And slowly release. Let's bring it up. And from here, we're going to work on our core. Remember, we want to gain uh, strength, flexibility in our core. When you work on your back, you need to also work on your core. That's going to help us to stand straight. Core keeps you tight, keeps you straight, keep your back strong. You'll have a straighter spine or straighter uh, posture, which in turn helps you on so many levels. So from here, we're going to do um, the boat pose. So Navasana. So remember there is a version where you can bend your feet. We'll do one like that and then we'll do the second one will be advanced. So from here, you're going to bring it up and you're going to bring the legs up and hold for five, four, three, two, one. You're going to crisscross the legs and take a little hop, a little strength and core there. Now, on this one, we're going to do the um, straight legs, or you can keep your legs bent, whichever one works for you. So bring it to here and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Cross your legs and hop. All right, now we're doing one more bonus. Now you can choose to do the, the basic or the advanced, knees bent or legs straight, your call. So from here, let's bring it up and hold for five, four, three, two, one. And take a little hop. Good. Working on the hips here on the next one. Gumukasana. So now we're gonna cross the legs, knees pointing forward. Okay, and we're gonna do this both sides. Okay, then now you're going to X the arms and you're going to pull up and then pull down. Release and let's cross it up the other way. 
Remember, you want your knees forward as best as you can. Cross the arms the other way. Pull up, then pull down. And release. From here, almost done. Lie on your back. We're gonna do a bridge pose. Arms to your side. And we're just gonna do a half bridge. So lift it up. Make like a sliding board posture. We're gonna do two versions, full and half. And let your legs lay or spread. Neck long. Slowly release down. This time we're gonna do a full bridge. So you're gonna lift it up, interlock your fingers, tuck your shoulders, neck long, get that great big extension in the spine. Knees forward, breath deep. And release, bring it down vertebrae by vertebrae. Squeeze it in, big hug. Now from here, bring up your right leg and I want you to either interlock behind the knee and pull back. If you can grab your big toe, pull the big toe so you can get that nice stretch, nice hamstring stretch here on the back of the leg. And release. Let's rotate to the other side. Again, the same thing, interlock behind the knee. If you can grab the toe, grab the toe. And release, squeeze both legs in. And stretch it on the floor for Shavasana, the resting pose. Arms to your side, palms up. Let's take these next few moments and just relax, surrender, and just allow the yoga, the body to connect, to heal, to bless the body. Take the peace and the strength and share it. Namaste.